Earth's Mightiest Heroes, The Avengers, go up against a few grease monkeys in the most lopsided movie feuds episode to date. Don Toretto's Fast and Furious crew might not pack the sheer brute strength of the Hulkbuster, but they have plenty of muscle, especially in their cars. My favorite YouTuber Jonathan Paul is back for a fourth time to see how many consecutive episodes of movie feuds he can lose. This time it's not just about being fast, it's Avengers Age of Ultron vs Furious 7. The seventh entry in the Fast and Furious franchise is loaded with a multicultural group of talent, including Vin Diesel, Paul Walker, Dwayne Johnson, Michelle Rodriguez, Jordana Brewster, Tyrese Gibson, Chris Ludacris Bridges, Kurt Russell, and Jason Statham as an unstoppable bad guy. We have a Hulk. We have a Rock. Specifically, The Rock. We have A, The Rock? No, that's stupid. Dwayne Johnson is an impressive specimen, but names don't get much bigger than the Marvel lineup. I'm talking Iron Man. Hulk, Thor, Captain America, Black Widow, they're all there, they're all better than ever. Even the second string characters pop up from time to time to keep things interesting. War Machine, Nick Fury, and then etc. Then there's the newcomers. Quicksilver and my new crush Scarlet Witch, played by Elizabeth Olsen. If that woman came even 20 feet from this mind, she'd have a restraining order on me faster than Vin Diesel can say family. She's the Olsen sister we always deserved. Seriously though, the fast cast, as I like to call them, is as tight of a group of players as you'll ever see. They're endearing, authentic, and entertaining characters you can hang out at a backyard barbecue with. And the beautiful send-off to Paul Walker had me in tears. Tell me, Adam, did you even cry when <laughs> died during the Avengers? Of course not. He was dumb. But let's talk villains. Loki's been in a string of Marvel movies and he's kind of a favorite go-to bad guy. But Ultron is just as menacing. Being able to shut down computers in a matter of seconds and swap bodies faster than a Hennessy Venom GT make him a dangerous adversary. You just googled fast car, didn't you? Yeah, that's exactly what I did. Emmy winner James Spader was a fun villain, no question. But is he Jason Statham? Not even close. You don't know his character name, do you? Uh, Ian or Owen or Declan or something? It doesn't matter, okay? Ultron barely receives any origin explanation. One minute he's a pile of metal in Geppetto's shop and the next he has a shiny new body 11 feet tall. Statham gets perhaps the best introduction of a villain in modern cinema, slow motion walking through a ruined hospital that he destroyed moments earlier. He's a chilling nemesis. Are there plot holes? Yes. Is there some lame acting? Of course. Are there cliched moments? Absolutely. Let's stop talking about Fast and Furious 7, though, and get back to Avengers 2. Hey, low blow, Pacquiao. Age of Ultron ups the stakes in all departments. We have a bigger risk in the form of artificial intelligence. We have struggles, not just physically, but mentally, internally. Then we have the subtle calls to the Phase 3 movies. Right, because watching an advertisement for an entirely different film that's still three years away is how I love to be entertained. And let's not forget that bizarre relationship between Johansson and Ruffalo. Not since The Notebook or Titanic has there been such a beautifully told love story. Being sarcastic, by the way. All the good ones were taken. Thor's giving Natalie Portman the hammer of Odin. Iron Man's lost in Pepper Potts' Daisy Dukes. Hawkeye knocked up Velma. And Captain America's 140-year-old virgin. Not to mention Nick Fury, who I'm sure would love the opportunity to get with ScarJo. He'd probably give his right eye. But at that point, it seems pretty foolish. Because he'd be blind? Because he's blind. Story is just a means to an end. Hell, the writers can't even get the titles right for these movies. But the 134 minute narrative brings our car racing heroes from the twisty roads of Eastern Europe to the beaches of the United Arab Emirates, as a mysterious government agent tasks them with retrieving an all-seeing eye computer program. Given the extenuating circumstances of the film's troubled production, which was pieced together from the limited material Walker had shot before he died, the fact that the story is even remotely cohesive is downright impressive. John, if you were having a hard time keeping up before, you might want to just pack up and call it a day. The Avengers has an overwhelming amount of action and effects. Hell, the Hulkbuster sequence versus the Hulk has maybe more VFX shots than in the entire Fast and the Furious franchise. There are so many cool moments from the 20 minute opening battle where we get our hero shot of the team leaping in to the smaller scenes where we have Tony Stark outside of his suit having to fend off robots with some of his team. Then there's Quicksilver. Although not as good as the X-Men interpretation, he still has a lot of fun moments. And then there's that final fight that is a sight to behold. No shame in bowing out now, John. I fear if you continue, you're not going to gain any friends. That's my secret, Captain. I don't have friends. 
I have family. If Fast and Furious has shown me anything, it's that nothing is stronger than just that. Not a souped-up flip car or an exploding can of NOS or even an impossibly long airport runway. They may not have a giant green monster, but they do have Vin Diesel, who is also apparently capable of leveling a parking garage with his foot. DIESEL SMASH! What really matters for these films is the action, and that's where Furious 7 delivers in spades. An insane stunt that sees Diesel and Walker flying a supercar between three adjacent Abu Dhabi skyscrapers is as amazing as it is unrealistic. Earlier, a skydiving car chase along a Colorado mountaintop is a well-edited sequence with nail-biting thrills. In addition to the great score from Brian Tyler, the movie ends with the haunting Wiz Khalifa and Charlie Puth original See You Again, which was not only a beautiful tribute to Walker, it also knocked the powerhouse pop song Uptown Funk off the top Billboard slot. And it got over 200 million views on YouTube inside of a month. And it's been stuck in my head ever since. Whereas Marvel couldn't retain Alan Silvestri yet composer and had to use two separate people to continue his work. The Avengers theme song may not be the most exciting one out there, but it holds its own. Brian Tyler does the majority of the legwork, but he does get a little bit of help from Danny Elfman. They remixed the original Avengers score and tied it in with a lot of the other MCU theme songs like Iron Man and Thor. It has a great universal feeling and makes it seem like one big happy family, which I know you're a fan of, John. And plus, it doesn't have a bunch of generic shitty rap music. Whoa, you kiss your mother with that mouth? The plot is a bit scattershot, the characters aren't always utilized correctly, but the impressive stunt work and touching tribute to Walker make this a must-see for all fans of the series. Going above and beyond the scope and believability of previous films, Furious 7 provides fantastic excitement that pointedly eulogizes one of its own. And the public agrees, Adam. Furious 7 is about to cross the $1.5 billion mark at the box office, which will put it ahead of, you guessed it, the Avengers. If you would have told me, even five years ago, that I'd be defending Avengers versus a Fast and the Furious movie, I would have laughed in your face and then continued strangling that homeless man in the park. It was a dark time in my life. I still think Fast and the Furious is a laughable franchise that's gotten far bigger than it has any right to be. But not everyone's into talking raccoons and magic hammers. That said, I'm willing to part with my Michelle Rodriguez signed wife beater if Avengers doesn't decimate Fast and the Furious in this feud. John, why don't you go ahead and do your plugging thing. When I'm not arguing with Mr. Minnesota over here, you can find me at youtube.com slash feudnation. Seriously, I feel like I have a residency on this show. My real channels are Jogwheel, where I read funny spam emails and review movies, and John, where I play video games and rant about current events. Subscribe if you feel like it, it doesn't seem to matter anyway. Two films enter, one film will leave. It's up to you to determine which one's truly superior. Leave a comment, like the video, and vote for the victor. If you like my little show and want it to continue, please show your support on Patreon. Just a simple dollar would increase this show's longevity until the day I died. Most likely at the hands of the homeless man's son who's been plotting his revenge for years. Should have killed him when I had the chance. What the hell are you talking about? More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. It's like he's actively trying to make this show worse. <laughs> <laughs>